And so today is our final series, our final message in the series of benefits. And I hope that you've been paying attention and not just paying attention or watching, but I hope that you've been discovering benefits that you need yourself, that you desire for God to fulfill in your life that you have maybe missed and that you'll actually do a checkup. That's really what this is all about. And because God wants to demonstrate his goodness to each one of us. And if you're not experiencing all of the goodness of God, you need to do a checkup. So David, in our series, where the scripture is from Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5, where David has talked about uh, the complete psalm go on and discuss more things than he uh, talking about, but in the first five verses, he mentioned five things that are benefits um, that God gives to us. And so we want to read those, and the last one we'll get to today is the one that we'll camp out on. But David said, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my most be, praise his holy name. What David is saying here is he's calling on his soul, on his inner part, to actually praise God to magnify God for all the things that he's done. That's what he's saying. The next verse says, Praise the Lord on my soul and forget not all his benefits. So remember the things that God has done for you. Each one of us will be praising God for something possibly different because God has done different things for each one of us. So it's not necessarily the same thing. But he goes on to, to list them. He says, Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And then he goes on to say, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the evil. Those are the five verses. And that last one is where we're going to camp out at today. But so far we've covered four things that God does that benefits that we receive from him. He forgives us. And that means he's, the one verse says, forgives you your, your iniquities, which means that that includes both the sins that you think about that even you haven't committed yet, and also the sins that you actually commit. God forgives and continues to forgive. Each one of these are verbs of what he does, not necessarily what he's done in the past, although if you think about the past, that's what he's done. But he's still doing this in your life today. He forgives, he heals. Uh, all of our diseases, whether that's through um, medicine, however it is, your body renewing itself, uh, as um, we went through on one of our messages where we talked about how the body is designed to actually heal itself. And um, third one is he redeems us. We were in the slavery of sin, but God has redeemed us from that curse, from that law. And you don't have to be slaves to whatever sins that is that you are that you have a high propensity for, and so um, you can break free of that. And that's one of the things that they've been saying that God has given us. And the last one we talked about the last two weeks was He crowns us um, with tender mercies, with loving kindness and tender mercies. That means He honors us just like He honors Jesus, and He authorizes us to actually what He authorizes us to do is to express his tender love and his, his kindness and his mercies to everyone else. He wants the world to know about his mercy. He wants the world to know about how kind he is. And it's up to you and me to do that. And this week, we're going to talk about he satisfies, how he satisfies. And so today's title is Supernatural Satisfaction. Anybody ever had supernatural satisfaction? Maybe you want to figure out what that is yet, right? <laughs> But supernatural satisfaction, that's what we're talking about today. And, but before we get into the supernatural part, I have a question for you. What is, or what does satisfied mean to you? What does that mean to you, to be satisfied? What is that, when you think about being satisfied, what does that mean? Um, you can give me some feedback, whatever chat line that you're on. Um, and, but what does that mean to you? It, it means a lot of different things to many of us. Um, but to, to, for me to be satisfied, um, if I think about food, it means I've had enough to eat, I've had what I want to eat, <laughs> and um, what else would that mean? But it, it goes on, it, it reaches beyond food, 
means I'm actually, if I'm satisfied, then uh, if I'm free from doubt. When we look at the definition for satisfaction, just the English definition, it, it's saying that you're free from the suspense um, or even uncertainty. So you, the more certainty you have, then the more satisfied you are. But it's to cause your mind to be at rest, where you don't have to, you don't have to be totally occupied with what is going on. Uh, people who are not satisfied, sometimes they're, they're always thinking that somebody's out to get them. There all kinds of different things that are going on. And, uh, but we want to know what this supernatural satisfaction is all about. There's different areas of, of being satisfied. And being satisfied in your work or your business or whatever job you have. You know, how many of you find satisfaction in the work that you do? Because um, sometimes we as Christians, we think that the only thing we're supposed to be satisfied in is what we do at church, the work that we do for God. But you need to be, God wants you to be satisfied in whatever work it is that you do. And we'll get into that a little bit today. But in your relationships, you should be satisfied in your relationship, whether that's a business relationship, whether that's a marriage, whether that's a son, father, daughter, mother, however, whatever, all relationships, God wants you satisfied in those relationships. In your love life, satisfaction, self-satisfaction, being satisfied with yourself. You need to have self-satisfaction. And if you don't find that in yourself, then there's some dangers of what satisfaction, the lack of satisfaction actually does. Here's a quote from um, Mahatma Gandhi, and maybe some of you don't like him or whatever. I'm just going, I'm just using this quote today to spring from. I'm not saying that I agree with everything, but I want to spring from this quote. He says, Satisfaction lies in the effort, not in the attainment. Full effort is full victory. Um, I know some people who would agree with that. I know some people who would definitely not agree with that. Um, I agree to a point. Um, <laughs> But um, we should, because what he's actually saying is we should not wait for the results of a project or whatever we're doing to be satisfied. We should be, pro we should be satisfied from the effort that we put into the, and see, I see some of you shaking your head. It's like, you know, you don't get rewarded for effort. <laughs> you, get, you get rewarded for results. And, and that's what many of you are saying in your mind. <laughs> But I want to, this will, this will kind of give you a way to understand what God is talking about when he talks about being satisfied. Because part of what uh, Gandhi is saying here is partially true. Um, because we're not saying, I'm, I'm not saying, I don't know exactly what he's saying, but this does not mean that I stop trying to get better or make the project better or the situation better because I'm satisfied doing the project. It doesn't mean that if I didn't get the results that I desired, that I'm satisfied anyway and I'm not going to try. So that's not, what this, that's not what this means. The key here is not to allow the results to define your satisfaction. So don't allow the results to define your satisfaction. If you do, there's some things you'll never be satisfied with. You'll be forever going on and on and on. Uh, and, but if you find a way to be satisfied without depending on the results, and you still have the same drive to get the results that you desire, there's some, I, want, I started to use the word, there's some magic in that, but there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's some spiritual relief in that that God gives. Um, but the, the results that you get should drive you to even get in, get better. So don't don't stop, you know, um, doing whatever you need to do to be satisfied, and 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 then just stop because okay, that's what he said. I need to be satisfied. <laughs> you know, um, that's that's not the key. So um, here's 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 what natural satisfaction is all about. Our natural satisfaction is often related to how we define ourselves and how we define, um, you know, whatever it is that makes you happy. We look, you know, for happy. One of the things that I heard, um, uh, I think Kirk Franklin says in one of his songs, 
you know, he, want, he talks about the difference in joy and happiness. He said he wants you to be full of God's joy because happiness means that something's got to be happening. And you don't want to wait for something to happen in order to be happy. Um, for example, one of my biggest challenges is an area that Thomas Hing and I we joke about sometimes. Uh, one time we, it became a big deal. We were on vacation. There's, there's mainly two things that just get to my satisfaction and just disrupts me totally uh, if I'm not careful. And one of those things, we were on vacation, and I think Thomasine still thinks that I owe her another vacation because of how I ruined this vacation. <laughs> and so, uh, but we were on vacation and my computer crashed, hard drive crashed or something. And that's an area that, that, that I don't do well. I have to really pray challenge, you know, I am challenged when it comes to that, because I'm supposed to be able to make sure that everything's okay. But when anything catastrophic happens with my computer world or my technical stuff, I'm like, Arr! and it's like satisfaction is gone unless I make sure I get it from where God tells me to get it from. Uh, another area is when the money is funny. When the, <laughs> when the money ain't right, you know, um, you know, there have been times <laughs> There have, been, there have been times when, uh, when we've had contractors who didn't pay up on time, and the, the longer it takes, the longer I wait, seems like the deeper, darker hole I get into. And um, at one time, I remember after somebody paid up, Thomas Hayes just looked at me and said, boy, you're really different when you get some money. <laughs> and I think that might be true for everybody, right? Wow. And so, and, and maybe I'll still get to seeing that vacation because t when I start studying for this, I realize that there's some areas I need, to <laughs> I need to make sure I check up and get God's satisfaction on. So let's look at what David is talking about here, what the scripture is talking about when it says, who satisfies your mouth with good things, because that's what he says. He says, he satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth renewed you like the eagle. I want to cap out on the word satisfies here. Um, who satisfies your mouth with good things. This goes beyond with what we think about satisfaction. And so I want to look at the Hebrew word here for satisfies. Um, that word there is in the Old Testament, um, I believe, uh, 40, this, yeah, 47 times. And 25 of those times is the word feel. So that's what satisfies me. And then 15 times it's full. And, and so you get one of the top, and basically what it's talking about is to the point of you just can't take no more. You're satisfied, and you're running, you know, you, you're full. You, there's, you can't get any more in, into whatever you're trying to do. To the point of being weary, once one uh, explanation of this says, to the point of being weary, um, where you have an excess of what you need, you have more than enough, you are satisfied. But now, when you carry that definition over, he says, so he satisfies your mouth with good things. Now, if you don't really know what the Hebrew word there for mouth is, you could think that just means I get to eat all I want <laughs> and be full all the time. There are at least a few times a year where I know before I start, I'm going to eat too much. I, you know, I, when when Thomasine cooks for Thanksgiving and Christmas, I'm I'm going to eat more than I need to uh, when all that food's out there, and I am very satisfied. But when he says, "Who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle," he's not just talking about food. We need to look at the Hebrew word here for mouth. The Hebrew word here for mouth. Uh, it's in the Old Testament 13 times, so not a whole bunch of times. But out of 13 of those times, the word is translated ornament. You like, I know, right? That's what I said. When I read this, I was like, ornament. And then as I started reading some background on where it, came, where it comes from, it has to do with ornaments that are on 
a horse's bridle that actually has the bit in his mouth. So you can make the connection. Now I was talking about satisfies your mouth. And so one of the things I did this week is I, I called up Gary, one of our, <laughs> one of our uh, original founders, because he reads horses. I was like, so what does, I said, read the scripture and give me a call back. I said, what do you think? What do you think? What does this mean when it talks about, anyway, he sent me this long text message back. But basically, uh, especially in show horses, they put ornaments and decorate the bridle of the horse with all kinds of different things. And so when you put this together with what actually, from the Hebrew meaning of it, he's saying that he satisfies your mouth with them. But you've got the bit in your mouth. Now, to help you understand the bit in the mouth, I want you to take a look at James, the third chapter. James, when he's talking to his audience, talks about a bit in the horse's mouth. He says, indeed, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn their whole body. And he's making a point here where he's talking about, he's writing to his audience about controlling themselves, controlling their bodies, controlling their mouths, really, is what he's talking about, controlling your tongue, controlling your words. That's what James is talking about. If we look at the verse before it, he says, for well, we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, now look at this. He says, if you don't stumble in word, then you're a perfect man. And you're also able to bridle your whole body. If you can bridle your tongue, that's what he's talking about. And then the next verse when he says, indeed, we put bits in the horse's mouth. So, of course, I did a little study on the bits that go in the horse's mouth. And, I, you know, some describe it as painful, but it's really not designed to be painful. But it is on the very sensitive part of the horse's mouth. It's, and it goes between their teeth. So it's, it's, it's in there where it, once they get used to it, then just a little tug. How many of you ever ridden a horse? Just a little tug, you know, to the right or to the left, or however you make it stop. Um, you, if you, you know, really what that, what that rain is that you have that with the bit in the horse's mouth, it's a connection between you and the horse. And you, you, you learn to be gentle. How many of you have been on a horse and they just took off and start, start running with you? No. <laughs> I, I've been with a group where one of them did and just took her straight to the barn. <laughs> Left everybody else on the way back. And, but once you understand how that works in the horse's mouth and that that's a connection between you and the horse, then you can really understand it. Um, I got a good picture of this when I was watching the movie Avatar. How many of you watched Avatar? It's an old movie now. But if you remember, I, I was wondering why the, the uh, Nomi people had tails anyway, but when they would get ready to ride, whatever, whatever those beasts are, I forget the names of them, but they would grab their tail and mingle it with the beast, and that was their connection between the beast to tell them which way to go and how fast to go and everything. It's basically, it was a mental connection. But you know, bits in the horse's mouth is a physical connection that just tugs on the horse a little bit to go left to the right, where you want to slow down and all of those things. So here's what um, this really, really means, is that if you have control of your words and appetite, so that's the other thing you do with your mouth, is you eat, it determines your appetite. And not just food as far as appetite, but your appetite for everything. But if you can control your words, and if you can control your appetites, then you can control your whole body. So now what is this scripture saying? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. God wants you to control your appetites. He wants you to control your appetites. But if you can't control your appetites, you will never be satisfied. Does that make sense? Because if, if, if the more you eat, if you're not satisfied, the more you want to eat. Um, so, uncontrolled mouth and appetites, you are never satisfied. Here's some scripture um, that, that, bears, that bears that out. He, he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. Whatever it is that you love, whatever you're in love with that satisfies you, 
you will never be satisfied with what that is. Nor he who loves abundance will increase. So if you like to have a lot of things, even the more you get, the more you want. And the psalmist is saying, the, the proverb right here, whether that's Solomon, I'm not sure, but he's saying this is also vanity. This is vanity. You'll never, never have enough if what you're looking for is in the thing that you're, look, that you're looking for. So he says in Psalms, David says here, you open your hand. He's talking about God. He says, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of what? Every living thing. Who does this? God does. So you will never be able to satisfy yourself. But God can satisfy you as you look to him in the process of being, of whatever it is that bring, typically brings you your satisfaction. So, um, take a look at this. If you control your words, if you control your appetites, then God satisfies your mouth, your self-control with good things. So you can control your words, if you can control your appetites, that's food and other appetites. You know, um, parts of the brain, this is amazing. Parts of the brain, there's two parts, I don't remember the names of them, so I'll just say it like this. One part of the brain, if it's damaged, um, then you'll have no appetite. And if you don't control that, you will actually not have a desire to eat, you will starve, you'll lose weight first. But you can starve and eventually die, but you have no appetite because of that part of the brain that's being damaged. There, there's another part of the brain that if it's damaged, then you, <laughs> you have appetite even when you're not hungry. And you will want to eat all the time. And if you don't control that, you will gain weight and become obese. Possibly die again because you ate too much, continue to eat too much. But basically, you know, if you don't control even these appetites that you have to a degree, you know, for example, I, I think this goes back to growing up where I loved ice cream. And when we had ice cream, it was almost whenever someone made homemade ice cream. Anybody ever had homemade ice cream? And Living in Mississippi, you know, it was it was tough to get some ice cream. And so when somebody made some homemade ice cream, we would just eat way, way, way too much. Um, and, and so now I have to make sure that when I start eating ice cream, that I don't eat too much. That I, you know, so sometimes I'll take a, a pint of ice cream and I'll decide I'm going to eat half of this today. You know. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The last time I did that, the next thing I knew, the whole thing was gone. I ate it all. But you have to learn to control. Because here's what I've done when I've, when I've been successful at that. I eat the half I say, no matter what I feel, put the top on it put it back in the freezer and have a good day. And, uh, but when you talk about satisfaction, there's nothing that's temporary like that that will ever bring you true satisfaction. Nothing temporary, whether it's your job, even if you, are, you love your job, you love what you do, you love the benefits that it does, say if you're in service, you're doing something for other people, and you really like it, when what you provide made a difference for them, um, even in relationships, even if you're satisfied with the amount of money that you make, you, the next time around, you'll want more money, even if you're satisfied the first time. It's just it's a never ending circle. And so, the key we want to make here is that only God can satisfy. Only God can satisfy. Um, God, God wants us, here's the way I say it God wants us to get our life from satisfaction from Him. That's where our satisfaction actually comes from. And it's actually in the connection, just like in the 
<laughs> Just like in the movie, in the Avatar, Avatar movie, our connection with him, that spiritual connection that we have with him is where our satisfaction should come from. Now, we know that God wants us satisfied. He wants us to enjoy life. This is the scripture in 1 Timothy that gives us an indication of that, where Timothy, well, Paul is telling Timothy to teach those who are rich in this world because Timothy was a younger pastor that Paul had put in place in Ephesus where he was a pastor in the church and there were some rich people in that area. And Timothy said, Paul said, Timothy said, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their what? In their money. Don't be so proud about what you got and don't trust in what you got. He said, which is so unreliable. It could be here today, and it could be gone tomorrow. He said their trust should be where? In God. Tell them their trust should be in God. And then he goes on to describe why. He said, who richly gives us what? All we need. And not just needs, but he says all we need for what? Our enjoyment. God wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to be satisfied. This is a benefit that you have. And so if you are not satisfied, then you need to do some things to uh, look at what God wants for you and where you are and what you need to do to get in line with that. Now, what do you think is the benefit of being satisfied? Because he said he satisfies you um, with, satisfies your mouth with good things. What do you think is the benefit of him satisfying your mouth with good things? And we just talked about the mouth is really your appetite, your controlled appetites, whether that's food or other things. He, what is the benefit of him being able to satisfy you with that? You know, here's the scripture again. Who satisfies your mouth with good things? And here's the answer. So that your youth is renewed like the eagle. When we look to God for our source of joy, for our source of satisfaction, and not in the thing that typically brings us satisfaction, then we can have renewed life because that thing is temporary and it may not unfold the way you thought it was going to unfold. And God always worked things out for your good. And so however it seems to be working out, if you focus on what's working out and what's not working out and you base your satisfaction on that, you'll never be satisfied. But if you, if you focus on God who's actually bringing you the satisfaction, whether the thing you thought was going to work out or not, or the way you thought it was going to work out, you focus on Him, then the satisfaction, can you can live in satisfaction. You know, if you don't, if you don't, <laughs> if, if you don't live, well, let me say, let me say it like this. If you base your life on being satisfied with what you're doing and what's going on, your blood pressure would be way somewhere all the time, just waiting on things to happen that just don't seem to work out. Um, to the point of death, in one study that I read, this is, this is amazing, one study that I read says that um, more people die on Monday morning at 9 a.m. than at any other time of the week. So I looked it up. That's not completely true. But what this, according to the CDC, more people die from heart attacks on Monday mornings around 9 o'clock. So a bunch of people are not satisfied with their jobs. It's like, I got to get in front of this man again. Yeah. So you need to learn to get your satisfaction from somewhere else. And not allow different things to drive your, your blood pressure out of this world. And drive you out of this world. 
But look at what he says here. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. When we look to God for our source of joy, for our source of satisfaction, this is what he's talking about, renewed life. So I looked at, you know, some things for, about the eagle. Here's some things. They're at the top of the food chain, for one thing, you know. Eagles at the top of the food chain. Their eyesights are about five times better than ours. Which means that they can see up to three kilometers. That's almost two miles. So an eagle can stand on the top of our a pinnacle here and almost look to Martin Luther King Driveway and read the sign. And they can fly up to 160 kilometers. That's almost 100 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. I need me an eagle. <laughs> but here's the most amazing thing, right here, is they molt every, they molt new feathers um, at least every year, and some of them biannually, twice a year. So, uh, and not all at once, because the first picture I got was the eagles go somewhere, get in their nest, and then all their feathers fall off. And then when they grow some new ones, then they come back out. <laughs> That's not how it works. They lose them as they go, and then they renew them as they go. But in, within a year, all the feathers that they use for flight have been renewed in a year. And when God says, your youth will be renewed like the eagle, he's saying, when you look to him for your satisfaction, your life will be renewed just like the eagle. You don't have to wait a year. It's being renewed over and over and over again because you're, you're not depending on things to work out the way you want them to in order for you to have your joy, in order for you to have your satisfaction, in order for you to have um, the, the, the pleasure of, because it's in the relationship is really what he's saying. It's in, you depend on me and your connection with me. And we're together, you know, and when we're together, we make things, <laughs> we make things happen together. Now, whatever good things your heart can wish for, whatever it is, ultimately flows from God to us. That's, that's the key. Everything that I desire, all the things that I desire, if it's a good thing, all of the thing, good things that I desire, ultimately they come from where? From God. And he supplies me with him. He's promised that he would. So here's our challenge for today, this week. Your challenge is to cultivate the joy that God wants you to have, the joy of the Lord, as we often say. Cultivate the joy of the Lord during the process of whatever it is that you, whether it's a project, whether it's a relationship, whether whatever's going on. It's not about the work that you're doing. It's not about the effort that you are putting into it, it's about the connection with the source of the joy and the strength of whatever you need to put into it. Because whatever skills you have, God gave them to you. And if you're depending on your skills to make something happen, you still need to have that connection with the source of your skills because maybe you need to learn something new here. Maybe you made a mistake here. You know, I made a big mistake this week at work. Um, to me, it was a rookie mistake. Everybody was like, oh, let it go. Everybody makes a mistake. Um, but I was making some changes in one program, thinking that I was making changes in what I was looking at, and it wasn't working. But at the same time, my computer was connected to a different area, and I was just messing stuff up on it. And it took me a minute to get satisfied again. <laughs> it was like, wow, what, what? I mean, like, what's happening? Why, how did I do that? I mean, I'm, well, I shouldn't say I've never done that. I've seen people do that, and I've been grateful that it had happened to me, but now I'm in the same club. <laughs> but it's about your connection with the source of your satisfaction. And so, as we close this series out, what I want you to do is to pray. Even if you can pray now, um, 
you know, in your heart and ask God, you know, what, what do you want me to get out of this message? What do you want me to get out of this series? What is it today that I need concerning my satisfaction and where I am in you? Um, what, what, do you what, what do you need from God at this point? I want you to open your hearts up to this as we go through the rest of this challenge. So, um, your satisfaction is during the process because of your relationship with God. God is your source of life. You know, when I'm satisfied, it dispels all my doubts. It, you know, um, about whatever the situation is, because when you're, when things aren't working out, then doubt comes in, uh, all other things come in and start to flood your mind. Just like the situation I was telling you about, I started wondering. It's so, cause, you know, because I just had surgery on my eyes. I was like, did I not see that? <laughs> you know, you know, what's what's going on? And but when you look at God as your source of life, regardless of what your endeavor is, God is my source. He's He's the one that's bringing me the enjoyment out of this. Then I'm enjoying my relationship with Him regardless of what's going on at what time in the process of my satisfaction. I'm enjoying God as my Father, Jesus the Son of God. Um, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me, and so I'm never alone. I'm always, I have the support of the Godhead with me. So I don't have to worry. I can be satisfied, and at the same time, figure out what I did wrong. Because I must, must have figured it out and had somebody ask me some questions. I was like, oh, that's why that happened. And it was, a, it was like a flash. As soon as I realized I was in the wrong program, then I realized why we had problems over here. Because at first I didn't even relate to the problem. It's like, why is this happening over here? And then you start thinking, seems like everything goes wrong at the same time. Well, that's because you're messing up stuff over here while you're looking over here. But anyway, uh, I won't beat myself up anymore on that. So here's some action steps. In the satisfaction of your work or your job, find ways to um, engage God in the process as your source of whatever it is that you provide, whatever you need to accomplish, what you need to accomplish. Find ways to engage God. So many times, we only engage God when we think spiritually, when we think church, when we think, um, you know, prayer, when we think read the Bible. Engage God in your work. Uh, open your skill set to God. Open it up to God. He's the one who gave you the skills, right? And to his abilities um, and not limit it to your current skills. You know, don't think just because here's what I know, know God may want you, need you to learn something else. So open up your skill set to Him and not be just, big, you know, capped off at your current knowledge, capped off at your current wisdom. Um, knowledge expands, and when you open your skill set to God, He can cause you to discover other things to add to your skill set. Wisdom increases from the source of wisdom. And so when you open your heart, when you open your mind, to the satisfaction that comes from God instead of being dissatisfied with whatever it is that doesn't seem to be working out, then you are in a whole different place than most people. Because most people, when things don't work out, they start going in the opposite direction. So learn to, and learn how to cultivate influence by focusing on expressing your Authority. This is from last week, but the authority that God gives you when we talk about the thing, your, your mind that God puts in your mind, as far as you need to learn how to put that together so that your mental ability with the wisdom that God's already given you, you know, in your especially in your relationships, when you're not satisfied in your relationships, then you need to open up your heart to God and allow Him to be. The, the source of your satisfaction because you you start blaming the person that you're not doing this and you're not doing that and you're not doing this and especially if you are um, 
in the relationship, you you are the one that's let's say it's a, a work relationship and you're the boss, you're the one with the authority, and you want to use your authority to get the satisfaction you want. You 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 had bosses like that before. <laughs> where, where they just want to get done with they they want to put a check in the box, you know, and at your expense. And you should not allow that to be the step that you are depending on. So what you want to do is approach every situation with the mental and spiritual reality that God is your partner in whatever the circumstance is and that God will bring the satisfaction to your desires. It's God who brings you the satisfaction. It's supernatural because how do you receive satisfaction? The same way you receive all of the other four benefits we talked about. He forgives. How do you receive forgiveness? It's by grace, through faith. There's nothing you can work to get. How do you receive your healing? There's nothing you can work and get healing. It's by grace, through faith. How do you get redeemed? It's by grace. It's what God's already provided through Jesus Christ. It's because what he's already done for you. How are you crowned and honored uh, by God? And with authority, it's by grace that you receive that. And it's by your faith in Him and in that grace. And so today, how is it that you are satisfied? It's by grace. It's not by anything that you can do, no work that you've done. Uh, it's by grace for the work that Jesus has already done. You can't do anything to earn it or to make it work. Uh, but by faith, you can access that grace so that you, for whatever you need for the situation. So this week, take the necessary steps that you need to take to connect with us and live with the full benefits of being God's son or God's daughter, being in the house of God. And so, again, scan this QR code and connect with us and allow us to pray with you allow us to believe with you, to work with you, whatever it is that, however far you would like for us to go with you, then when you scan this, a form will come up and you can fill out this form. And there are places in this form you can let us know whether you, um, for example, today, you may never receive Jesus as your personal savior before and you wanna do that. You can let us know that and we'll connect with you and make sure that that happens for you. Um, I don't want to just pray um, and, and then you hear me, but I want you to connect. I want you to make a connection with us. And when you connect with us, then we will pray with you. We'll take you through the steps to make sure that you get the connection that you desire. Maybe you've already received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but you've walked away, and today you're saying, I want to renew that. Then let us know in, in that form that you use for connection and we'll get back with you and make sure that you can connect with God and with us. And our transformational strategy, this is what we do. On the weekends we come together and we do what we just did, and it's our desire to invite people to this environment and where they can hear words that will make a difference in their life, where they can change, they can use, that's why we use the challenges every week. I hope that you'll take one with you if you're here or you can receive it from our, um, in our uh, app, in our church app, it's there every single week, and we place it on Facebook, on our Facebook page, our Facebook group page, so that you can have that, and you can download it, and you can print it. And so if you're here today, you want one before you leave, there's some already printed out for you, but then you take the next step. Always be ready for the next step, so that wherever God, you can find yourself in the place and in a community with people who believe God, who trust God, who trust God with you in regards to the situation and regards to the circumstances that you're in. So God bless you. And today I want to pray one last prayer for, the, for you, those of you who are um, dealing with not receiving everything and not being satisfied. I mean, there's things, I understand there are things that happen that cause you to be apprehensive, the things that happen in your life that cause you to think maybe I just missed it and maybe that's gone. But I'm saying pick it up again, 
trust God again, and, and, and depend on supernatural satisfaction and not on uh, just the physical things that you can see. So bow your heads with me, if you would, please. Father, we thank you for this series. We thank you again for today's message. And I pray for everyone that's heard this word today and that will hear it. And I pray that you will move on their hearts to take a step in your direction that will cause them to look to you for their satisfaction. So God, we honor you, give you praise for that, that man, that woman, that young person who's even in college, who's depending on you. Right now, they're depending on other things for satisfaction. I pray that they'll hear this and that they'll look to you for that true supernatural satisfaction. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So God bless you and have a good day.